Captain on the bridge. Alrighty, Captains, we are back on the bridge, and today... Yes! Yes, let's go, Captains! We are on the World Razor! Captains, you know how excited we've been since we saw this ship, and we're still surprised that we have the ship in-game, all based off of a painting in Star Trek Picard Season 2. But here it is. We finally got it. Huge shout-out to Nick for selling this to us. He actually won this while we were streaming the other night. And he's like, did you want to buy this? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And of course, that came with a couple of instant uniform changes. So captains, what we're going to do in this video is go over the build, the weapons, space set, consoles, traits, stations, DOS, and then take this into an advanced cure. But before that, let's have a closer look at the ship since we have it in hand. Again, I know it's not the prettiest ship, but for some reason it's calling out to me. Even though it looks like a huge eye there in the deflector, especially where it's located in the saucer. Now, I would have it would have been better if they would have kept the deflector where it was before and have these sort of armaments then be placed where the deflector is now. But again, it is what it is. We have it. Here we go. Now, if we look at this, this thing has a lot of weapons on, mounted on this. And we're going to start here at the top of the saucer here. Now, I thought originally these were the same as the ones that come on the Gal X, but it is the same weapons, but the mounting that comes with it is a little different, just ever so slightly. They don't stick up as much and they are more they come out to a bend and stick straight up. But if we count the actual armaments on the saucer, this thing is insane. So we'll start here. So on this side, on both sides actually, it has five. So one, two, three, four, five. Five over here. So ten just there. And then on the saucer underneath here has one, two, three, four, five, six more points here. <laughs> this thing is loaded on top of the two that's up there. And then of course you still have the torpedo launcher, but then you look at the secondary hull, you have four more pew pew points here. It's, it's insane how many pew pew points this has. Of course in the aft it still has the torpedo launcher, but with the addition of these actual additional cannons here or weapon mounts. So again, side of the saucer there, the three there, and then the two there right below the saucer. Like this is just insane how much weapons this thing has. Now, I did mention this in my video before. I thought it would have been so much cooler if the sides of the saucer would sort of kind of come close per se to the middle saucer and then separate to reveal the weapons. That would have been so cool. But in our minds, we can say it does that. But here, here it is again. It's not, <laughs> I will say it, it's not the prettiest ship, but for some reason, as soon as I saw it, I want it. Not only that, this actually can kit bash with the existing galaxy skins we have in Star Trek Online, but not the Gal X Dread. And what we're gonna do after the video, after the pew pews, is actually show the configuration that I probably will use here and there. But for now, we're going to use the cannon skin. This is what we saw. Speaking of that, we're going to go look at the image that we did see in Star Trek Picard Season 2. And that's going to go on screen right now. This is... <laughs> this painting was on the wall of Picard's sort of, I guess, General Picard's room there when he was doing that speech there. And he was talking about the World Razor, how it helped them conquer and subjugate species there in the galaxy. But this is also what we're going to base the build on. And this is what we're taking inspiration from. So as you can see, it's firing beams all over the place. Not only that, you can see some sort of, I don't know, pulse weapons there. And we'll, we'll kind of get into that. It is coming from the torpedo launcher i believe but 
it is what it is. And of course, there you have photon torpedoes firing as well. And it looks like it's coming from the captain's yacht area. But regardless, this is what we're working with. We're going to take that, use that, like I said, as the inspiration for this build. And of course, you can see there it's fusing the Borgs. And that is what we're going to do. So we're going to go back here in game. And yes, the CSS World Razor. I couldn't come up with anything else, so we're using that. And it is the World Razor Temporal Ops Juggernaut. And of course, yes, we did T6X this. So here we go. So in the four weapons, this is what we used. We used the Obliviating Phaser Dual Beam Banks. And of course, we just actually got this from the safe galaxy lockbox we did open some we only opened 40 like i said in our previous videos when it comes to lockboxes we set a limit and we stay within it and we were able to get weapons from that now the actual dual beam banks i actually got from the exchange but we do have a full set of phaser arrays as well so we're going to be using that here and there and our various builds but this is what we decided to do here in the four, which is four of these Obliviating Phaser Dual Beam Banks. Again, reroll to crit DM and damage four. And what these have is the 5% chance for the plus 30 armor pen and 100% shield penetration. And of course, we can't forget about the torpedo launcher. We have a photon torpedo launcher here, which is crit DM and damage three with the spread mod. Now, I love the spread mod. It does well for me. I still see it proc here and there. And to know that I can get an additional, additional torp spread, why not? And it just does fine for me when it comes to our nightly PPUs and to the content that we play here on the bridge. So space set, here we go, nothing too different. The Elite Fleet Intervention Protomatter Deflector, which you can get from your fleet colony. The prevailing innovated impulse engines, which you can get from your competition rep. And of course, we have the mycelial harmonic matter antimatter core and the Tilly's Review pending modified shield, both from the Discovery rep. And the reason why we decided to do that, use this is for the two piece for plus 120% hull regen. We wanted to give this a little bit more survivability. I'm not saying it's squishy, but it is tactically focused. And I know I could have gone with the Plasma Integrated Warp Core, but I believe we have enough here that we don't need it. And like I said, we've been doing fine in our nightly pew pews. In our aft, this is what we decided to go with. So the Omni Directional Phaser Beam. This we actually bought off the exchange a long time ago. We're also going to use the Trilithium Enhance on the Directional Phaser Beam. This is an, a featured episode reward called the Nexus. And of course, this gives us a 2.5% chance to gain 10% fire cycle haste for energy weapons. And we have a lot of them. And of course, because there is still an aft torpedo launcher there, we're going to use the Prolonged Engagement Photon Torpedo, which we got this as an event reward a couple years ago years ago but you can actually still get this from the phoenix prize pack at, at a very rare tier if i'm not mistaken if i am mistaken just let me know in the comments below captain so as you can see here it is a mix of the obliviating and just regular phaser beams and again based on that image that we saw there the painting it's kind of a mixture of both so we're gonna go with that we're just gonna go with that for our devices we have the subspace field modulator for plus 34 all damage resistance rating for 15 seconds. We got some energy candy here for plus 20% bonus energy weapon damage for 20 seconds. We're going to use the temporal negotiator bridge officer power rechargers reduced by 50%. And then the Kobayashi Maru transponder for its buff goodness. Onto the console. This is what we decided to do. So the Lorca's Custom Fire Controls, which is from the Discovery Rep, or the flat-out 3.9% crit chance, and plus 157.5 Starship Shield Pen, 
improves shield penetration for starship weapons. Now, the console that comes on the ship is also what we base the theme of the build, which I'm calling either a Lance Fa build or a Fall Lance build. Either which way, it'll be in the title. We'll figure it out when we're doing and uploading the video here onto the YouTube bridge. So the console that it comes with is right here. The Light of Civilization console. And what it gives you is plus 35% crit severity versus foe below 20% health. And what it does, it's a heavy dot and it's instant core breach, 180%, I always say percent, 180 degree targeting arc. So initially it deals 1,100.6 phaser damage per second to foes for three seconds. And then it improves to 5,502.9 phaser damage per second after three seconds. If foe is destroyed, applies light of civilization core breach which then it is a 23,050.1 kinetic damage with a plus 3.8 repel. We like that. And this looks really good. And I'm going to have to revisit my Galax build and then put this on to it as well to act as a lance for it. And of course, one of our favorite lance consoles that we have now is the Emulating Phaser Lance. This comes from your Deimos Pilot Destroyer, which I got from my first event year campaign. Of course, this gives us plus 15.8% phaser damage and plus 43.8 Starship Shield Pen. And of course, this can hit any target. I believe I have not missed anything using this, but it's a very good console. I like it and it acts like as a replacement phaser lance for my Galax especially because the integrated one can't hit the side of a star base. Even if it does, it just, at least it looks like it, but still, I, I don't like it. And that's the same lance actually you can find on the Smexy, Lexi, and Trailblazer. But now we have both of these. Now, if I had it my way, we would also use the lance console that comes from the Phantom Intel Escort. But unfortunately, that is locked into that. But guaranteed, if it wasn't, we would, it would be on this build. The next console we have up here, kind of keeping with the Lance sort of theme build here, is the Variable Assault Deflector Array. This comes from the Inquiry, which is also a ship from Star Trek Picard, along with the Pilot Deimos Destroyer. So we got that off the exchange there. But this gives us a plus 22.8% flight turn rate, but also a plus 15% phaser damage. So it's a phaser cone blast buff to frontal shields. So 8,624.3 phaser damage to foes in forward arc. When taking weapon damage to forward shield facing, heal 75% of that damage for 20 seconds. Now I decided to use this obviously, of course, again for the lance build, spitting out phasers, but this also helps with survivability because for that 20 seconds, I'll be taking a lot of damage in my front shield and it does actually help and I've noticed a huge difference having it and why not it's a console that we rarely use and because it is from a ship that is from Starship Picard why not use it as well speaking of a ship that is from Starship Picard we're going to use another console from a ship that is from Starship Picard and that is the experimental power redirection which is from the XL 2.0 you know i love that ship captains but we're also putting it here because this is going to help with our immersion so what this gives us is plus 19.9 percent increased energy damage plus 13.3 starship weapon amplification so it improves critical hit severity with weapons and what it does is an overwhelming area beam attack to sell for 15 seconds plus 60 percent energy weapon damage scales with engine shield and aux power swaps randomly between beam overload three and fire at will three each second applies auxiliary phaser beam array overload at will three to random target times four dealing 954 phaser damage to each kills increase the number up to times 14. now this is just a symphony of beam overload and fall 
and I love this console. This console apparently is just going to go on every Federation ship that I have going forward because it just looks and sounds cool. I love it. So one of the ships that I highly recommend for your event campaigns, Captains, is the Excel 2.0. The ship itself is great, great looking, but this console also just does wonder for our immersion. Next up, we have the Point Defense Bombardment Warhead with a plus 25% projectile damage, 1% crit chance. This comes from any version of the NX. And of course, we're pairing it with the Dynamic Power Redistribute Module, the DPRM. This comes from the Prototype Dreadnought Cruiser, aka the Atlas. And of course, this is also a ship you can acquire from your event campaign but it gives us 11.3 all damage resistance rating plus 19% directed energy damage. And the clicky is an oh crap button. So it's a sell for 20 seconds plus 40% bonus damage while above 80% hull plus 100 bonus damage resistance rating and plus 5% hull regen. Now you pair that up with the point defense bombardment warhead and that gives us an additional plus 33% phaser damage for directed energy damage, which we have a lot of. So that helps a lot. So there's that. Now we're gonna go back to these consoles here. So we're gonna go to the M6 computer. This comes from your tier three temporal escort, which you can buy from your shipyard. And this gives us plus 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds, plus 25% cooldown reduction on tactical bridge officer abilities, 20% fire cycle haste for all weapons for 15 seconds, plus 30 ack and defense for 15 seconds as well. This comes again from that Temporal 3 Escort. Highly, highly recommended console, especially if you have a lower alt and or you're a new player. This is a great console to get and use. We're gonna use also its big brother, the Domino console, which comes from the Bajoran Interceptor. We got this ship from an event years ago, but you can also acquire this ship with the console in the Phoenix prize pack as the epic tier level. And what it is, is a plus 15% phaser damage, plus 20% ack rating. And when you hit it, it's weapon damage plus haste extended by kills for 10 seconds. 25% fire cycle haste for energy weapons, plus 25% bonus all damage, plus 25% recharge speed for bridge officer abilities, plus 100% recharge speed for torpedo weapons. Of course, we have both of them for and aft, so that's gonna help. And within the 10 seconds, if you defeat a foe, plus two seconds duration to all effects. So there you go, and can only occur up to 10 times. Next console up is the Bio Neural Infusion Circuits. This is from your low buy store, just for the flat out plus 26.2% crit severity. And of course the plus 29.5 Starship hull capacity for more hit points. And then the last two consoles, this is what we decided to do is two vulnerability exploiters for phaser, plus 39.4% phaser damage and plus 9.8% crit severity. So there's the build and this is the stats that it gives us. So crit chance is at 41.7%. Crit severity is at 212.9%. But keep in mind, captains, we do have our Pendevers helping us. I have mine ranked up to 600. This was the max rank before they extended it. I do have the 150 points to actually max it out, but I choose not to because we've actually been doing it just fine with our nightly previews and the way that we play, the, and especially the way we get through content. So that's why I have not used it yet. I will probably in the future, but we're doing fine right now. So I feel there's just no need to use the points. We're even doing fine when we do end game meta runs. We're still doing relatively well when I dabble in that part of the game. So there is that. Head to our skills here. This is my skill tree. I have not changed just in years. So here's a quick snapshot of it, captains. Feel free to pause it and check it out, but it's based of course on heavy tactical. We got some 
points in science and in engineering, but this is what we've decided to do. Specialization, of course, we have Intel primary and temp ops secondary. Traits wise, this is what we did. So a good day to die, beam barrage, fragment of AI tech, self modulating fire, adaptive offense, superior beam training, unconventional systems, Terran targeting systems, intelligence agent attache, the Boimler effect. And for our Starship traits, this is what we decided to do. So entwine, tactical, matrices. This is going to help extend our main damage dealer or keep it up 100%, which is our beam fire at will. So it links energy and torpedo firing modes together. When activating torpedo spread, applies fire at will one, and scatter volley one to self. When activating fire at will or scatter volley, applies torpedo spread one. So it's a great synergy trait. The carrier wave shield hacking. Captains, I've been using this mostly in all of my builds since we got this because we like taking the shields off. And it also helps with our uncon procs as well. But this also takes the shields off for five seconds and then plus 30% kinetic damage with the tractor beam. So emergency weapon cycle. On the use of pow emergency powered weapons, we have minus 50% weapon power costs for 30 seconds and then 20% fire cycle haste for energy weapons for 30 seconds. So that's why we thought we didn't really need the minus weapon power cost with the plasma warp core. And because we have this trade helping us a little bit. Of course, the universal designs for the plus two crit chance plus 10% crit severity when activating universal consoles. And we have a lot of them. Overpowered and overgun, again, minus 15% weapon power cost for 9.2 seconds, and then 12.5% fire cycle haste for weapons for 9.2 seconds. In the last trade here, we have the supercharged weapons. So firing a torpedo grants one stack of the supercharged buff. That stack up to three times directed energy weapons gain plus 10% damage for 20 seconds, 1.5 crit chance and 6.6 .6 crit severity for 20 seconds as well. Space reputation, nothing too different here. So magnified firepower, plus 6.3 bonus weapon damage there. Our advanced charging systems with the crit severity. Enhanced shield pen, of course, to bypass shields more. Precision for the crit chance, and of course, Tyler's duality for the additional 5.1% crit chance based on hull capacity. That's also why we chose hull capacity. The more hull, the more crit chance we get. An active space rep. We have anti-time entanglement singularity, biomolecular shield generator, deploy sensor interface platform, quantum singularity manipulation, and refracting tetrion cascade. So again, nothing too different that we've been using before. We'll head off to our stations, left to right, top to bottom. This is what we got here is tractor beam. Very confederation slash federation thing to do. And our Uncon procs as well. Scramble sensors and photonic shockwave. We have distributed targeting and there's our torp spread 2 to help give us an extend FAW. Keep FAW up, I should say. Chemocyte Lace Weaponry, Attack Pattern Beta, and our main damage dealer right here is FAW 3. And of course, the Stop Hitting Yourself Power, Recursive Shearing 3, because this is a temporal specialization ship, along with being a command. So Emergency Power to Engines, we're going to swap between both. Emergency Power to Weapons, and then Concentrate Fire Power 3, one of our favorite torpedo powers in game, way before Command was revamped. Jam targeting sensors. And now let's go to our dopes. We'll go to our dopes. This is what we're working with. So the two on ground helping us in space and definitely will help us in space. So Neil Falconer is a ground off, but it'll actually help us increase our damage versus the Berg. 
and Elder Mugaton space increase damage versus all. And then the active space here, we actually have three energy weapons officers, two of them which will give us a chance to stack crit chance or severity, I should say, when we fire energy weapons. And then the one to help us stack crit chance when we fire our energy weapons. We also have a projectile doff, which will give us a chance to stack crit severity when we fire projectiles. Dlyreen here to help us for more increased damage versus Zeberg, which will come in handy. And of course, Emergency Con Holograph Officer, which will recharge our evasive maneuvers, our, our EBC maneuvers, when we hit Emergency Powered Engines. So there is the build. Super happy with how this turned out. Super happy with the ship. So what we're going to do is take it into a cure advance. And when we do so, our strategy is we're going to go to the left cube, clear out that left cube. Once we have taken out all the targets there, we're going to go across the map to the right, clearing the ships heading towards the Kang, clear the right cube and all the targets there, head over to the middle, clear everything there, tell the Kang to get out of there, <laughs> and then finish off the TFO. Now, as a bonus, after the TFO, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'd mentioned that we can actually kit bash the World Razor with all the Galaxy skins. So I'm going to show one of the configurations that I probably will be swapping back and forth between the Cannon skin and of course that one because I just feel that it gives it a bit more of a armored look personally. But for this, Pew Pews, we're going to be using the Cannon skin that we see on the painting. So. Again, we're going to take this into a Cure Advanced because this is just kind of what we do for our nightly pew pews anyways. And Captains, please keep in mind, any builds that you see here on the YouTube bridge, it is just for our fun. We do this because, yes, we can do the elite stuff, but we prefer just having fun and not worrying too much about pushing for min-max because when you do that, that means you kind of miss out or I miss out on building ships the way I want to. And this is just me sharing my fun with you caps here. So cure found, we're gonna go to advance. Start here and remember, Engage. Captain Picard, and yes, Riker is also with us. Keep that in mind caps. So here we go, yeah, here we go. Tactical alert, vessel approaching, bearing 184, Mark 7. All hands. Battle stations. Here we go. Again, left to right. Weapons hot, deflectors to full. Okay, we're gonna scoop across here. Get these. Go over here now, get these. These are energy candy. Let's see how she's doing here. Make sure that there's no ship Heading towards a king, we'll have to protect it. Head over now here. Use the light of civilization. There it is, boom, bye bye. Get rid of that raptor there. And then let's head over to the middle now. Get rid of these Negvars. While we're hitting also everything else. Symphony of Phasers. Yes, please and thank you. Use 
use that to our advantage. There's the Vada. There's our Torp spread there. Energy Candy. And we're clear. And look, the Kang wasn't even touched. So let's tell the Kang to get out of here. Oof, that was <laughs> this ship is so much fun, Captains. Oof. Now we'll just take care of the last three targets here. And yes, we're gonna use the Juggernaut array here. This thing is just hilarious when it goes off. Here it is. Just a huge phaser. <laughs> just a shotgun of phaser damage. Just cause why not? And we got... <laughs> and there it is, Captains. We were able to hit that TFO, no problem. And actually, we'll, we'll show this up. I'll show you, Captains, one of my favorite positions here in this map to take Shelfies. And Captains, if you don't know what Shelfies are, those are ship selfies. For some reason, the lighting here just does wonder. Like, look at that lighting underneath the whole, sauce, the whole ship there. It just looks really good for some reason here. And of course, it does. It helps that there are Borg bits in the background there, showing that this ship means business, 100%. So there is how it did in that pew pews. But like I said, captains, we're going to show off the kit bash that we actually like to mess with here with the ship. So we're going to go to the ship tailor and show you one of our personal favorite configurations for the ship. Even though I don't mind the World Razor Cannon skin, but this works for us 100% as well. So we'll head over to the ship tailor and then show that configuration off and then captains give our conclusions on this lovely ship and this is a bonus i don't normally do this but this has some great kid bash ability options here run over here show this off customize ship so of course this has the world razor skin but this is what we like to do. So for the neck, we like to use the Venture. And the reason why, Captains, if you look at it, so we'll reset the look here. So there's the neck right now. With the neck here, when we go to the Venture, it lowers and squats the profile of the ship. And I feel that it's, it's it thickens the neck as well. And I feel that it just is a more armored look so that's definitely one of the things that we like to do here and then it just kind of sleeks out the back too as well so even if we show that off again with the real razor of course we're used to that but then you have this configuration it just feels like it armors it up and i feel that it works really well and then for the nacelles, the only other thing that we do here i do like the nacelles there's nothing wrong with the nacelles it's kind of probably one of my favorite configurations but for the nacelles, this is what we like to use, which is, again, the actual Monarch nacelles. Which that, I feel, again, bulks up the nacelles and makes it look more armored, at least in my opinion. Now, we could also still use the World Razor's nacelles, but I would use different pylons, and that I would just use the galaxies. So we'll show that configuration off quickly so the galaxy sorry not the galaxy so the world razor and then for the pylons the galaxy and of course switch the skin on me we'll go back to the galaxy quickly here and i feel that still works as well because of how close the nacelles look to the saucer in comparison it, that also I feel works as well. There's a little bit of a gap there 
at the back, but you, you re rarely notice it. You, you won't notice it. But again, to show off our favorite or one of our kit bash options here, pylons will go back to the world razors. Of course, the gal skin. Reset that. Again, that just to me just bulks up the world razor and makes it even more mean and sleeker, in my opinion. So, captains, we're going to leave it on this image here of my configuration for the world. We don't normally do this, but I've been having so much fun with the ship. It's so hard not to have fun in the ship. And I'm super glad I have it. Again, huge shout out to Nick. Thank you so much for selling this ship to me. I am glad and I do highly recommend it. Captains, you can get this ship for your next year's campaign, the 2023 campaign. All you got to do is do all the events in about half to three quarters of a year. You'll be able to pick this out in 2024 to get your very own World Razor. Now, to the Picard ships that we've gotten recently, between this, the Excel 2.0 Sagan, what would I recommend 100%? It's really hard. It's, it's almost like a toss-up, but... It's still a toss up between the Sagan and the Excel, but this is just ever so slightly below those two because of just how, how, I don't know how, again, I don't know why I like this. I just do, but again, my recommendation, regardless, if you can get this captains, this is available to you. I would not recommend opening boxes for it. Again, always sell the keys for the EC so that you can get an end or Use your 2024 event campaign to get the ship because, again, it is super fun and I'm glad I have it. And really, there's not a lot of other ships left for me to get here for the bridge. I say that now, famous last words, but if we do, we'll always share what we do. And again, Captains, I will say this again. Keep in mind, we only do this for fun. So, Captains, do me a favor. Like the video. Comment below. Let us know your thoughts on the World Razor coming to stow based off of a painting. Based off of a painting. And captains, one more time. Yes, yes, let's go. So excited for this. And we'll actually just leave it on this note. Don't let them promote you. Don't let them transfer you. Don't let them do anything that takes you off the bridge of that ship because while you're there, you can make a difference.